Hey y'all, I'm Mandy, and this is Mandy in the Making. Welcome back to another very special edition of What's for Dinner. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you some of my favorite slow cooker meals. This whole video should come with a disclaimer of be aware. <laughs> These are old videos. So I went back and thought about some of our family favorite meals that I have shared over the two and a half years that I've been on YouTube. And a good many of them, I would just do an individual video before I did what's for dinner video. So I would just do one individual video of that particular recipe. So I've kind of combi combined those and compiled them into this one video. I'm gonna share with you six different ones that we really love. Be aware that some of them I don't show the whole cooking process because that's just how I did what's for dinners when I first started doing what's for dinners. Um, it's just, it was cringy, y'all. It was cringy going back through all of this old stuff and I was like do I really want to put this out there but they're good recipes so just forgive me for the footage <laughs> just we can just take time to appreciate the fact that I've gotten much better over the two and a half years that I've been doing YouTube so what I'm gonna do is introduce each meal here and then cut to the footage from my old videos showing you how to make that meal the first meal I'm gonna share with you is one of my all-time favorite meals in the crock pot, and that is Swiss chicken. Also, one more disclaimer before we move into the actual video. You're gonna see in the video, I have one of those crock pots that has the locking lid, and you're only supposed to lock it if you are traveling with the crock pot. So you've cooked it, you're traveling to take it somewhere, you lock it then. You're not supposed to lock it when you cook. I did not know that. You guys made me aware of that after I started my YouTube channel. So I no longer lock my lid, but in several of these videos, you're going to see me lock the lid. Just, just know that I know better than that now. <laughs> okay, let's go make Swiss chicken. Here's what you'll need for the recipe. One box of stovetop savory herbs stuffing mix, a fourth a cup of milk, a fourth a cup of butter, melted, six slices of Swiss cheese, a can of cream of chicken soup, and six chicken breasts, but I'm only using four since my family is a little bit smaller. And it doesn't call for this, but I do stab the chicken and then sprinkle on the nature seasoning. It's made by Morton's. It's a great seasoning mix that I like to add to chicken. You'll want to spray the bottom and sides of your slow cooker with Pam. Then you just combine the cream of chicken along with the milk and then pour that into the bottom of the slow cooker. The recipe tells you to put the chicken in first, but I put the soup down first and then the chicken just so that the stuffing does not get soggy throughout the day. Now I'm just layering the chicken to lay on top of the soup that I've already put in there. Now you just put a piece of cheese on each chicken breast. I only have four chicken breasts, but I do use more than four pieces of cheese, simply because I want cheese over every square inch of that chicken. Now that the cheese is on top of the chicken, the last thing to do is just to pour the stuffing mix on top of everything. And then after the stuffing mix is on there, you're gonna take your melted butter and just drizzle that over top of it all. And that's it. You put the lid on and you can turn it on high for two to three hours or low for four to six hours. This day, it was a little bit later in the afternoon, so I did just do high on three hours and it was perfect. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. After I've already taken a bite and remembered, oh yeah, I need to film this. It is so delicious. It's my husband and son's favorite chicken dish. Another family favorite of ours is Autumn Delight. We've been making this for several years and it's a very easy one. It's using cubed steak. I'm gonna show you step-by-step step what you need to make it, how to make it, let's go. I found this recipe about a year and a half ago or so on allrecipes.com. I'm gonna link it below in the description box but all you need is a pack of cube steaks, however many you need. Um, I think I have a family pack here of six, a couple of tablespoons of vegetable oil, an onion sliced up, 
two cans of the regular cream of mushroom soup. I know there's only one can sitting there, but I did use two. One can of the cream of mushroom soup with roasted garlic, one pack of the onion soup mix, and one cup of water. While I slice up this onion, I've got a pan right next to me on medium heat, and I've got a couple of tablespoons of the vegetable oil in there. It is warming up. You wanna make sure it's good and hot before you add the um, onion in there. I do break the onion apart as I'm adding it, and y'all, this is the hardest part of the whole thing. This is a crock pot meal. It's super simple, but I say this is hard just because it takes a few minutes. This is going to take you about 15 minutes or so. You're going to let these onions cook down. You're almost caramelizing them. So keep it on medium heat. Stir them around pretty frequently. They will start to like wilt down and brown up, and that's what you want. And then once you're done, all you're going to do is just transfer them to a bowl and set it aside. In that same pan that's already hot and still has a little bit of vegetable oil left in it, I'm gonna add my cube steaks. You're gonna brown them on each side for about five minutes. While those are starting to brown, I'm gonna mix up the cans. I have two cans of the cream of mushroom, one can of cream of mushroom with roasted garlic. I'm gonna dump this onion soup pack in there and the cup of water, just mix that all around. Now I'm going to grab my crock pot out and my crock pot liners. These things save the day. When I run out of them, I regret it because then I have to scrub my crock pot after I'm finished. I love this because it makes for super simple cleanup. Now I'm just going to pour the soup in the bottom of the crock pot and then I'm going to grab my cube steaks and put them into the soup in the crock pot. Um, I lay them on top and then I kind of spoon the mixture over top of it just so that they're completely covered. After I get everything good and covered, I'm going to put the onions on top of it and then I'm going to pop the top on the crock pot and set it on low for five to six hours. The recipe recommends that you serve it over egg noodles. My family is not a huge fan of egg noodles, so I always serve it with mashed potatoes. Here, so. Then it's just time to plate it up. I put the mashed potatoes and the cube steak and gravy all together. Um, it just tastes really good all together. It's so smooth and creamy and just, it's just delicious. It's one of our family favorites. Okay, for the third meal, Steven said he really wanted me to show you this. I cringed so hard at the footage of this video and I don't even show all of how to make it, but I tell you how to make it in the video. So forgive me for that, but it's cheeseburger soup. It is still one of our favorite meals that we have, especially during the fall and winter. It's so comforting, so cozy. So I'm gonna share with that with you next, but just know that I didn't show the entire process. I was learning and I was holding the camera with one hand and trying to figure out how to do all of this. It's an old video, y'all. Here you go. We found this recipe maybe a month ago or so and we've fallen in love with it. It's really easy. Um, the longest part of it is just chopping up all the stuff that goes in it. So in the crock pot, um, these are our four potatoes, just uh, the russet potatoes, small ones, diced up. Um, one stalk of celery diced, one cup of shredded carrots, and one onion in here, chopped up. So all of that is gonna go in, along with three cups of chicken broth, um, a teaspoon of basil, and a teaspoon of parsley. I'll just eyeball that. And then you just put that um, on low for six to eight hours, or on high for about four hours and then I'll show you what we do after that. All right, so it is, it's been five hours, like there's five minutes left on the timer. Ideally, around 45 minutes or so left on the timer, you would come and start this. I just let time get away from me. Um, but this is just a pound of ground beef, and once I brown that up, I'll drain it and add it directly to the crock pot. And then in this hot skillet, I'm going to put three tablespoons of butter and a fourth a cup of flour and whisk that around until it becomes golden brown and bubbly. Then I'll add in two cups of milk 
and stir that through and heat that through and then add it into here as well as two cups of shredded cheese. You could use Velveeta if you wanted to use Velveeta or you can use shredded cheese, the recipe says. Also, and you'll just add in like a half a teaspoon or so of each of these salt and pepper and then let that sit for 30 more minutes. So that's why you kind of start the process 45 minutes ahead of time. It gives you a few minutes to get this stuff done, add it in there, and then that's going to sit in there for 30 minutes and then it'll be time to eat. All right, y'all. So it's been 30 minutes and it is done. Look at that. It's so good. It really is just like a cheeseburger. It's so great. Um, I didn't make anything else to go with this tonight. It is just a soup night. So let's eat. In the middle of me filming this portion, I don't, you probably can't hear that. Cole starts screaming for me. He's outside. Me and Steven go outside to check on him. We don't know if it's rabid or not, but there is a huge squirrel on the side of our house acting crazy. So they're outside dealing with that. I'm gonna finish doing this. I'll let y'all know how this goes. Okay, for our fourth meal, I'm gonna be sharing. It is barbecue bacon wrapped chicken in the crock pot. It's really easy. I'm sure you could do it on the grill, it would be great. But if you can't go out to the grill, if it's really cold outside, you don't wanna go out to the grill, but you still want it, this is a great option. So let me show you this one. For this recipe, you'll need chicken breasts, however many your family needs, the juice from half a lemon, a bottle of barbecue sauce, bacon, you'll need two pieces for each chicken breast, pepper to taste, you'll need a half a cup of brown sugar, and then it calls for one onion diced, but this is a very large onion, so I'm probably only gonna use about half of it. Before I get started, I'm gonna go ahead and line my crock pot with a slow cooker liner. I don't always use these, but I try to remember to. It just makes cleanup that much easier. So what I'm doing now is just wrapping each chicken breast in two pieces of bacon. is just layer the onions on the bottom. Now I'm going to layer the chicken on top of the onions. Now I'm just gonna take my pepper and just sprinkle it over the top. You can use as much or as little as you want. take half a lemon and squeeze the juice over the chicken. I'm gonna pour the barbecue sauce over top. This is a larger bottle. I've already used some of it, not a whole lot. I don't think I'll use the whole thing. This is a 28 ounce. Usually I tried to get a 12 or a 16 ounce to put in here. sugar on top. It calls for about a half a cup. I usually just kind of eyeball it. it. We're going to cover it and cook it. You can cook it either on high for th about three hours, but I'm going to do it on low for about six hours. Dinner is served. So this is what the bacon wrapped 
barbecue chicken looks like. I just made some mashed potatoes to go along with it. My husband likes his in a bowl and it kind of just all kind of melts together, I guess. But we're about to eat. One other thing I wanted to mention that I forgot about to tell you earlier is most of these videos were filmed before we did taste tests. So that's why you're not seeing Steven give your, his opinion on the meal. Anything I've ever shared on my channel is something that we all love, but just wanted to kind of give you that heads up. Y'all are seeing like old stuff pre-taste tests. The fifth meal that I'm sharing with you this week is pasta fagioli. I'm probably saying it wrong, but it's a copycat version of one that you can get at Olive Garden. It's one of our favorites. So comforting, so good. All right, so this soup is called pasta e fagioli. And honestly, I don't think I'm saying that right, but I'm gonna move on. You'll need a pound of ground beef. That's what the recipe calls for. But we've been using a pound of Italian sausage and we like it a lot better. It gives it more flavor. You'll need carrots, celery, onion, two cloves of garlic, a 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes, 28 ounces of beef broth. You'll need Italian seasonings, salt and pepper, a can of cannellini beans. I couldn't find them this time, so I got the Great Northern beans instead and it was just fine. A can of light red kidney beans, a cup of uncooked pasta. It calls for ditalini pasta, but I couldn't find that this time, so I just used elbow macaroni. And then you'll need Parmesan cheese grated for the top. The recipe calls for four stalks of celery diced, two whole carrots diced. My um, target did not have whole carrots. It just had the baby carrots, so that's what I had to go with. And then one onion diced. After I diced everything, I just put it all in that container and took it over to my slow cooker. I'm gonna line my slow cooker with a um, crock pot liner. I love those things. They just make cleanup so easy. Now I'm just taking the Italian sausage and crumbling it up into the bottom of the slow cooker. You don't have to cook it first because it is gonna cook all day long. You don't have to worry about that. That freaks me out a little bit, but it works, I promise. Next, you're gonna add in your crushed tomatoes, then your beef broth. After that, I added in the minced garlic, two cloves, and then all of the cut up vegetables. Then I just sprinkled Italian seasoning over top of it and salt and pepper, and I stir all of that up. Then you just cover it and cook it either on high for three to four hours or low for seven to eight hours. You probably noticed I didn't put in the beans or the pasta. You do that 30 minutes before you're ready to eat. So it's been all day and it's almost time to eat, but right before we eat, I make sure that all of the sausage is chopped up and then I add in the uncooked macaroni and then I'm adding in the beans, which have been drained and rinsed. Then I just pop the lid back on and set the timer for 30 minutes. Just time for the pasta to cook. Okay, so the timer went off, which means it's supper time, y'all. And it's time to eat. And my guys were really happy because the house smelled heavenly. I usually just check on it to be sure that all of the pasta is cooked and add a little more salt and pepper. And then we put it in the bowls and right on top, we just put some grated Parmesan cheese, just like they do at the Italian restaurants. And it is delicious. Update on the squirrel. Steven does not think he's rabid. He's just a wild squirrel. He's a big boy though. Really big. I, I saw him at the back of the yard yesterday and I was like, wow, <laughs> really big squirrel. He was on the side of our house making all kinds of commotion. We didn't know what was going on, but they've kind of chased it off. There you go. End of the squirrel saga. We're moving on to recipe number six. So for the final recipe that I'm gonna share with you today, it is one of our family favorites again, and it is barbecued pulled pork in a crock pot. I love this recipe. I got it from my friend, Jenny, and it is a staple in our house. So here you go. Today, we're gonna to be doing a recipe that I got from my best friend, Jenny. She has this great recipe for barbecue pulled pork in the crock pot. The recipe calls for a three pound Boston butt. This is a little over three pounds, but we're just gonna put this directly into the crock pot. We're 
going to be making our own barbecue sauce. A half a cup of brown sugar, two teaspoons of salt, a tablespoon and a half of chili powder, one teaspoon of dry mustard, two teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce, a fourth a cup of white vinegar, and a six ounce can of tomato paste. I'm just going to cover this and cook it on high for about seven to eight hours. And then at the end of the day, we'll just shred it up and put it on hamburger buns. It's been several hours. We just have a couple of hours until we're going to eat. So I'm going to make some coleslaw. This is really simple. I'm going to show you how. Add in almost this entire jar of sweet relish. One big scoop full of Duke's Mayo. I really just kind of eyeball this. I don't know the exact measurement. I just do it until I feel like it's creamy enough. And then lastly, we're just going to add in a little bit of salt and pepper. About a teaspoon or so of garlic powder. and just a splash, maybe a tablespoon, of vinegar. And take a bite. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. Perfect, I'm gonna pop the lid on it and put it in the fridge. Oh man, look at that bad boy. That looks good, doesn't it? <laughs> You're a little messy there. That bad boy is so good. I mean, the, the barbecue sauce is just absolutely incredible. And then you've got the, the sriracha sauce on top with that little kick there. It's messy, but it's so good. Save a little bit for later right here. <laughs> That's what my daddy used to say. Mmm, it's so good. All of the, the, and the pork is just, is just absolutely perfect. It's so tender and juicy and now I'm gonna get some of this slaw here. Oh yeah. Oh man, that is really tasty. Oh wow. That pop of that that vinegar that's in there, really get the, it's not too much. And then it sort of softens with the, uh, the mayonnaise. And there's that little hint of garlic. just enough to make a difference. Wow.
Home run? That was really good. <laughs> good. I hope you enjoyed going back and seeing all of these yummy recipes that most of you probably have not seen. I know I have a lot of new subscribers here and you probably haven't gone back and watched all of my videos. So those are some of our family favorites that you can do in the crock pot. Right now it's like crock pot season. So I thought I would share those with you. If you are new here, I promise you my footage gets way better. <laughs> my videos get way better. You should check out some of my most recent videos. I will link those below. I've got several crock pot videos that I've done recently. So be sure to check those out. Also, if you're new here, I would love for you to stick around and subscribe, join my YouTube family. Just hit that red subscribe button below. It's free to do so. And that just guarantees that you're not gonna miss my content when you log back into YouTube and you go to your subscriptions feed. I'll be there. Thank y'all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And good news is I have a brand new what's for dinner that will be out two days from now on Friday. So be on the lookout for that. It's a good one. I'm going to be using my Instant Pot for the first time. Thanks y'all. I'll see you next time. Bye.